I was able to accomplish and achieve the sort of consistency and longevity that I did based on a singular focus of how do I get the absolute best out of myself from a performance standpoint. He was the youngest of five children. His mom was a teacher, and the other four kids all had got college degrees. I mean, it was a very bright, well-educated, highly motivated, high-achieving family. In high school, I was a 100, 200-meter sprinter. Throughout my four years of my college career, I was primarily 200. And so for the first six years of my professional career, the 200 was uh, the race that I was more focused on. And when I had to pick one, I would run that one and win it, and then have to sit in the stands and watch someone else win the other one and feeling like I could win that. And I didn't like that feeling. Inside Michael Johnson, there was a lot more going on that he wouldn't really let us see. It was my first Olympics. I was ranked number one in the world for the past two years. Hadn't lost a race. I was a defending world champion from 1991. So I was in fantastic shape that year and uh, I got food poisoning just before the games. Just sort of wrecked all of my preparation and condition. Michael Johnson in lane two, Frank Fredericks right next to him in lane three. Coming now to the top of the stretch and a delicate of Nigeria has a short lead. Now Michael Johnson is really having to work to get there as Frank Fredericks wins and Johnson Johnson may not have made the final four. Wasn't able to advance. Biggest disappointment of my life. Frank Fredericks of Namibia was the winner of that second semifinal heat of the 200 meters. That inability to run that final in 1992 definitely bothered him and was one of the things that spurred him on. OK, so what could I have done to prevent that? Well, I could have had my royal food taster, you know, taste all of my food and then wait 24 hours to see if, you know, they still look healthy or not, and then I'll decide to eat it, you know, and that's just not practical. I've been named as one of the members of our 4x400 meter relay team. And I remember, you know, we won it and I was, you know, we got our gold medal and it was just not a, a good experience for me at all. I wasn't there to win a gold medal as a member of a relay. I didn't win the medal that I wanted. I start to question, am I really as good as, you know, I thought I was? Didn't get it this year. We'll try again next year. That, there is no next year at the Olympics. I don't think I was poisoned or sabotaged, but I've never thought about that. You know, maybe you never know. I mean, I was beating up on people pretty bad, and maybe they didn't want me to win, but they weren't able to keep me down for long if that was the case. Immortality. I mean, we knew the situation. The situation was Michael was as close to unbeatable as unbeatable can be. Michael Johnson is for, and he's cruising for the finish. Michael Johnson coming home all by himself. Michael Johnson is halfway to history. So there was a group of us really fighting for the other two medals. When I say, you know, I, I came second to Michael Johnson, it's OK. So I'm very fortunate to be part of Michael's history. He changed the 400 metres event, no doubt about it, because he was the first pure sprinter who took on the 400 properly. He made us all realise this is a sprint. You've got to have speed to run the really fast times. I remember standing behind the rostrum and I remember just being aware that Michael was, he wasn't in the moment. And I remember turning to Michael and, and saying, are you all right? And he said, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, th this is it. This is why we do this, you know, don't forget to savour this moment. And there's this wonderful shot of Michael. I think it's the only time he ever cried on a rostrum. He blames me for that because he said I snapped him out of... He was already thinking about the 200 metres. It was going to take breaking the world record in order to win. Michael Johnson running for the line and into Olympic history. 
I wrote at the time, he turned the inevitable into the incredible. Everybody knew he was going to win, but nobody thought he was going to run 19.32. I was really focused on just trying to make history and be the best that there's ever been in those two events. As these young kids come onto the stage, can we give them a good old Aussie good day and welcome? Stadium Australia in Sydney. Michael Johnson in another attempt to make history. He would become the first man to win back-to-back -back Olympic 400-meter gold medals. 400-meter final is underway. I wanted to end my career on a good note. I wanted to end my career as a champion, as Olympic champion. Michael Johnson will win another and once again submit his place as an all-time great. Michael Johnson, the first to repeat as Olympic 400-meter champion. In track and field in, in, in general, I think Michael, Michael Johnson was a name that, that everyone knew. I appreciate what he's done for us and the, the, the example he set out for us and the records that he did put out there for us. It, it really motivated myself. There's probably nothing that you're ever going to be able to do in your life that's going to top that. So I'm going to have to prepare myself for another career We're focused on helping athletes be the best athletes that they can. Michael always gave you the impression that he was going to be the mechanical engineer with the pocket liner and the pens in his pocket. Same idea, drop straight. He never sleeps. When he does sleep, he's dreaming about what am I going to do to be better tomorrow. And so what that does is it almost forces him to look around at everything, evaluate how it is today, and look around for opportunities to improve on what's going on today. And that drives a lot of people crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's much harder for a track and field star in America to be really well known and to really leave their mark. Uh, and I think Michael has done that, not just because of what he did on the track, but what he's done off the track as well. Hi, I'm Michael Johnson. We're here in Dallas, Texas at Michael Johnson Performance. And we're working with the young leaders, doing a little bit of basketball here, a little team building. A really cool exercise so we can get to learn how to communicate better with one another. My foundation is really focused on helping find young people around the world who are really interested in helping their communities and helping other young people who have overcome significant challenges just as they have. This year we had our first class of 15 young leaders whether it be you know, lack of education in their community or poverty in their community or war. What we're trying to do with this program is to find those young people who have overcome those challenges through sport and who have shown a real passion for being a leader in their community and changing their community and helping other young people overcome just as they have. Just like Drika here in Rio, it was soccer or football that helped her overcome the poverty and the situation that she was in. And then she decided, well, I'm going to use the same thing. I know that kids in my community love football, so I'm going to help them through using football. Eu aprendi coisas diferentes de várias culturas porque tinha tinha crianças, tinha jovens de vários países e eu aprendi coisas sobre como manter a minha saúde em dia, a saúde das crianças também. Aprendi o hacker. <laughs> These young people have gotten themselves to the starting line and then decided, instead of just going ahead myself, I'm going to help others get here too. And so, uh, so they inspire me, and that's what makes me feel so good about what we're able to do with these young leaders. Michael Johnson. I have great memories of my career, but I'm happy with what I'm doing now. As long as I'm close to athletes every day, you know, I love what I do now. I still have the same, wake up the same way that I did when I was competing, wake up every day, driven, ready to go, you know, conquer something.